Ciao everyone, today I'm going to show you six of my favorite Waves compressors and how I use them specifically to mix rap vocals. Rap vocals perhaps are some of the most challenging elements and crucial element in the mix. Due to the fact that you have, as a mixer, respect the dynamic range of the artist, even more the flow, and how well this extremely rhythmic instrument blends in with the rest of the beat. For this specific example, I've chosen a song that I produced, recorded, and mixed called Different Breed. And on vocals, I had the pleasure to work with one of the greatest rappers of all time, Mr. Chris Classic. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of the song called Different Breed. And then we're going to go ahead and show you some of my six favorite compressors that I generally use when mixing rap vocals. So as you hear, the vocals are very rhythmic. The pocket and the flow that Chris has is insane. But the problem with such a dynamic vocals is that some lines speak out more than others and you want to retain the flow, yet using compressor more as a tool to bring and glue all of this flow together rather than just flattening out the performance, which is not what we want here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the techniques that I will imply. Now, right now you have heard the vocals being mixed. Uh, one of the very first, although is not part of this tutorial, uh, plugins that I use is Sibilant. Now, Sibilant is a great plugin that Waves uh, has done in order to monitor and keep under control the extra S's that are generally produced by artists due to proximity effects to the microphone. And similar sibilance in this case allow me to detect a specific portion of the S's, monitoring it, and kind of like dim them just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and play you the vocals with and without sibilance first. In the city of sin, it's become a lost start in the hearts of men without in the city of sin it's become a lost start in the hearts of men now right now you've heard the vocals unmixed meaning i didn't have any of the compression i previously had i'm gonna let you hear for a second without opening the compressors the vocals without sibilance and with sibilance just because i want to show you how much compression is actually bringing forward and upwarding all this very small nuances of the vocals. So this is without sibilance and pay attention to the S's. In the city of sin, it's become a lost start in the hearts of men. Got the will to win. No in the city of sin, got all these letters poke through the mix way too much. So by engaging sibilance, I was able to monitor all these S's and kind of like set a threshold to pocket only the elements that I didn't really want to come forward within the mix. In the city of sin, it's become a lost start in the hearts of men. Got the will to win. So as you can see right now, we have a much more contained vocals that allow us to set up different stages of dynamic range. The very first compressors that I work, that I use generally, are a classic style of compression. I generally use them in parallel and actually if you have a chance I highly encourage you to go and check my zero compression video in order to understand a bit more the philosophy behind what I'm about to do here. So for this example I'm going to be using two compressors. The 1176 Bluey and the LA-2A. Now, why am I using these two compressors? Well, to start, those are two completely different type of compressors. Uh, one is a field effect transistor compressor, the 1176, 
The other one is CLA-2A, it's a tube-based compressor. So they're going to be taking care of different part of the signal. But what's most important is the order in which we use them. In this case, of course, I'm using the bluey and not the blacky face because the bluey has a bit more of an upper mid-range boost that works really well with vocals. Now, what a lot of people underestimate or don't know maybe at this compressor, that the 1176 is actually a compressor limiter. Hence, we could use a very high ratio up here in order for us to really work only on the portion of the signal that we want to retain a bit more. So I'm going to go in this section over here where our vocals tends to get kind of like out of control and let you hear before without it and then with the um, 1176. To win, no sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey them. Especially here. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the... So we have some of the letters, some of the words that are kind of like going out of control. So in this case, I've set my 1176 with a pretty fast attack, a 20 to 1 ratio, and a rather fast release. As you're going to see, this compressor is not meant to squash the dynamic. This compressor is only meant to work in retaining some of these very high picks. I'm going to let you hear without first and then with again. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey them in all time. Great. So with this very first stage of dynamic range compression, we are taming down the picks and kind of like performing a downward compression meaning making the loudest part of the signal kind of like lower. Right now what I want to do now that everything is being contained by our 1176 is kind of like move on the other way around and actually using upward compression with our CLA-2A. In this case, again, as you're going to see, I'm not going to compress even more than 3 dB, but these two compressors together are going to give me a specific sound. If I bypass the CLA-76, only letting you hear what the LA-2 is doing, you won't be able to really appreciate the sequence by which these two compressors have been positioned. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey them. So as you can see right now, the compressor is kind of like acting on, yes, the average portion of the signal, but you also have a lot of the picks to keep under control. So what is the name of the game here? Is having each single tool, because those are simply musical tools, taking care of specific parts of the signal. So my first compressor, it's there in order to retain all these picks to trigger in the wrong way our uh, tube compressor. Our tube compressor instead is working to give a bit more color, but also bring forward all those parts that are beneath the actual picks. So I'm actually going to let you hear this line without the zero compression and then with. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey them in all time. Great. With. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey them in all time. Great! So as you can see right now, these two compressors are working on different part of the signal and are doing a great job in making sure we retain enough dynamic, but yet make sure that this dynamic doesn't overpower the entire mix. This is one example how I use waves CLA's series compressor. Moving forward, another of my favorite compressor is the MV2. Now the MV2, it is a great compressor because it gives us two stages of compression. So very similar to what we have just done with our um, serial compression with 1176 and 2LA, in this case over here, I have a lower level that works a bit more in the upward and expansion way. And then I have a high level that is a bit more in the realm of how um, an R compressor would work 
that helps me to retain the ticks so that I am at the same time doing an upward and downward compression, making sure the level just sits right. I'm gonna let you hear first without and then with. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. In context. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. With the MV2. Before in solo and then in context. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate them in all time. You hear how the vocals are pretty much a bit more aggressive than the previous two compressors, but way more pocketed in context. I'm gonna let you hear the zero compression. I would say the two classic compressors work a bit more mildly. The MV2 is a very aggressive piece of gear, but I do a lot of things, not only rap vocals, uh, also um, a lot of small, jazzy, very breathy passages that sometimes just need a bit of extra gain stage before actually writing an automation and inserting a different compressor. And this is a great and valuable tool for snare drums, for instance, to bring up a bit more of the ghost notes. More on that later on. The other compressor I love is the R Comp. Now, the R Comp, it's very peculiar because it gives us different types of flavors, and those are here. I'm going to talk about them in a little bit. But the R Comp gives us the ability to set a threshold. We have a ratio. Uh, of course, our makeup gain, and then we have our attack and release, which are based on the type of circuitry we choose. Now, in this case, uh, the attack over here is expressed in milliseconds. The release goes from, of course, an extremely fast release to an extremely slow release. I'm going to double click and reset my release time. And then we have our different compression modes. We have the IRC which stands for Auto Release Control. So just in case you don't know how to set the release. In this case, the compressor, based on the program material, will set a release time for you. In this case, the release time on this compressor could be set either manual, which is exactly what I'm doing, just clicking and dragging the potentiometer over here. If you're unsure, based on the program material, you could actually use the ARC which is actually our automatic release compression, which works a bit more like a classic vintage compressor would work, uh, which is based on program material feeding the compressor. In this case, I found myself a bit more confident in using and setting my own release time. Now, in terms of the release behavior, over here we have to talk a little bit more about these two other settings. Now, in this case, Opto, the release is getting slower when getting closer to the zero. Only when the dynamic range is less than 3 dB and we're getting close to zero, the release become a bit slower. It works a bit more into the relay of almost uh, an LA to A. If we would set the warm, in this case, other than the automatic release time, over here we have some hidden menus. As a matter of fact, we have two different types of behavior of this compressor, opto or electro. Opto, for instance, the release becomes slower when getting close to the zero, but only when we have a gain reduction which is less than 3 dB. If instead I select Electro, Electro release becomes faster only when the gain reduction is less than 3 dB. When it's above 3 dB, the release becomes much slower. Along with this, we have a smooth or warmth. Smooth, in this case, it's a very transparent compression. On the other hand, you've guessed it, warm, it's a very noticeable compression because it acts a bit more on the lower harmonic of the signal feeding in it. So in this case, the way I've set this compressor is in manual mode, opto. I really like the behavior of the release time and the compressor. And in addition to that, I've set it up my warmth. Let's go ahead and hear what this compressor can do to our vocals. 
before without and then with. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't the with. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. In context. So it's kind of as this compressor, it's kind of like the best of both worlds because it is a very transparent compressor if needed to be used in that kind of like lame of things. But when we adopt different types of release, different types of circuitry and harmonic saturation, you hear how this compressor is actually imprinting to the vocals a very nice and solid texture. The last two compressors I generally use or a classic R box. You can't go wrong with your R box. It's this beautiful and easy compressor that pretty much help us to really bring forward and contain a lot of big part of the, the, the vocal performance. Now, in this case, I wouldn't use all these compressors in sequence. I would go and choose and pick exactly what I need for the specific song. But I generally find myself more often than never using the RVOX specifically to kind of like gain stage a bit more the vocals before feeding an actual compressor, a bit more what a clip gain, a manual clip gain would do with Pro Tools. So I'm gonna let you hear before, without, and then with. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate. With. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. In context. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. So I would say, among everyone, among everything we have listened so far, this one is a bit more noticeable when in solo. It does add a bit of pump and breathing, especially the more you compress, the more you hear this type of compression. But nevertheless, this pumping and breathing help the vocals to cut through a bit more and kind of like redesign a bit more of an aggressive type of texture to the vocals. So another great compressor, and this most likely I would end up using it in conjunction maybe with different other compressors. I would definitely put this at the top of my chain though. Last but not least, the C6. The C6, it's a multi-band compressor. Now, I would not probably use this by itself, but even in this situation when I'm actually showing you how this compressor works and using it him by itself is gonna achieve and obtain great results for what you're trying to do. Now, in this case, multiband compressor allows me to have different crossover points, and I can dictate bands that I want, or frequency that I want to expand, reduce, keep it under control, and I can pretty much reshape the overall gain structure of a signal without necessarily altering everything. I could choose and pick exactly what is that I want to tame down and what is that I want to expand. And the beauty of this compressor is that it gives you tons of possibility. Uh, you still feature the exact same release kind of behavior. Uh, we have the opto, the electric, the electro, and of course your knee. And then every single band is adjustable singularly up to a specific crossover point. So I'm going to let you hear this compressor before, without, and then with. But also, once I will engage it, I will let you hear what is that each single band is doing to our signal. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. With. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. In context. Again, this is a great example, has one compressor, set it up in the proper way, could actually help 
the vocal still retain its dynamic range and its aggressiveness, but yet being pocketed. So I'm going to go ahead and let you hear what these bands are doing. So we have two bands of this compressor, which are actually um, working in a, a bell type of situation. So they could be either broad or very narrow. And then we have three broader bands, a low frequency band, a mid frequency band, an upper mid frequency band, and then of course the highs and the lows could be uh, retweaked. So in this case, let's start with the lows. So in this case, it's very hard to hear if you're not wearing headphones, good headphones, or listening through speakers from a recording studio. In this case, this specific band is doing what a high pass filter would do, but in a much nicer way because it's synchronized to the rhythm of the voice. So we still have the chance to retain a bit of that extremely lows that we would normally cut out, but that help the vocals to stay very full. Along with that, what I did was, as you can see here, we have a zero line, but I bumped a bit between 128 and almost 600 hertz with this multiband compressor working in a counter way. So what I'm doing is that I'm bumping a little bit of the body of the vocals, but yet keeping it under control on specific frequencies. So there is a lot of great information within this frequency range and even more in the next one, which I had to apply a couple of things in series. So what I did was taming it down a bit, this 1K very nasally and harsh uh, frequency that generally gets recorded. And additionally, I've used a smaller bell to kind of like tame down um, 1,542 hertz with a Q of 3. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. I'll let you hear it without this and this upper mid. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. With. Incredible. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. You hear how the vocals right now are less upfront, still very present, but they're not actually hurting your ears. And then last but not least, I've expanded from 2K onward, still having the compressor synchronized and actually bringing down a bit of the upper mid range of the vocals. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Altogether. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. And so as you can see, this compressor is extremely versatile because it allows you to really tweak all the smallest details that generally a broader compressor like the one we faced before cannot do it. Now, what is the, the, the key and learning and most important learning elements you should get from this? Is that every single compressor could be used in tandem with other, compression, with other compressors in order to obtain the desired result. Now, there is not a good or wrong way of going, right? It's a matter of taste. It's a matter of how the song is speaking to you and the type of message you want to deliver. I'm going to let you hear, uh, again, all this combinations of compressor all at once. And I'm going to just leave it up to you. Leave it in the comments what type of compressor you like the most. So let's start with serial compression. MV2. Our compressor. Our box.
to conclude this tutorial, it's essential for you to try all these compressors out to see exactly what suits your needs. And again, this is just a tip of the iceberg. Um, right now I'm mixing rap vocals, which are very, very hard to actually being contextualized inside a beat. But it's up to you how you want to use them. I'm gonna actually leave a link down in the description for you to actually get these Wave plugins and try them out. And perhaps if you like them, purchase them. I highly encourage you to test them all out because they are incredible tools and incredible creative and inspirational tools. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you all and until the next one, ciao.